for the introduction and um, for all of you for being here today. And I know that I'm not just speaking for myself as someone over at the Capitol, but for Representative Moran. Uh, and I saw Representative Aaron Murphy is here and Senator uh, John Marty was here at one point today, I saw. Uh, and also some folks that I hope are coming back, Paul Rosenthal, uh, I saw, and Sandy uh, Mason, and Jerry Newton uh, in 2012. So, so every day uh, you know, at the Capitol, one of the things that we do when we start session is we say the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, like a lot of things uh, in a lot of our daily lives, uh, we kind of go through the routine of saying it, of reciting it, without really thinking about what it really means and what it's really saying. Uh, and someone mentioned uh, Cory Booker and his speech on Martin Luther King Day uh, in Minneapolis. And one of the things that stuck with me when he spoke uh, was he said, you know, think about when you're saying the Pledge of Allegiance, the last six words of the pledge. Do you guys know what those last six words are? <laughs> with liberty and justice for all. That's really what our country and our state uh, is all about and the goal that we all ought to be striving for. And I was thinking about that, uh, I think about that now every day as we say the pledge, but I was thinking about it this week when two folks from Children's Defense Fund uh, came into my office to meet with me and they told about some research that they've collected uh, that says this, that if you are a child born into poverty in Minnesota and in this country and are there for the first three years of your life, it's a more than 50% chance that you are going to live in poverty for most of the rest of your life. That's the kind of society that we are living in today, and more, even more than that, that fact is true in the United States of America that says we're dedicated to liberty and justice for all, than in any other, in all the other things that people have talked about, ought to be what our mission is about as we move forward here. Uh, because that simply is unacceptable. And as I thought about uh, that fact, and I thought about that quote, you know, when we talk about liberty, you know, that is a word used by the, the right wing more often than it is used by us. But what it really means is not just that you're free, but we have give people the opportunity to actually be free, right? To live up to their dreams. And we can't let uh, the right wing capture that concept from us. What we have to say is that if we're going to be free, we have to make sure that that child that's born into poverty actually has an equal opportunity to live out their dreams because we are not going to be the kind of society that is going to succeed unless we make that happen. So you mentioned the inequalities and disparities in education and it's true in healthcare. It's something that we really have to attack as a community together. And justice for all, if it is a fact that if you're born in poverty you're going to end up in poverty, that is not justice for all. It is justice for the few. And what you're talking about today with your vision of taking on corporate power and making sure we take, a, uh, take on racial injustice, what you're talking about is equality of opportunity for everybody and justice for all and not just the exclusive few, which is the direction that uh, this country has been going down for too long and this state and what's happening at the Capitol right now. And so we do need to stand up together against that. So how do we go about doing that? Well, I want to give you one more quote uh, from Martin Luther King this time, uh, which has always uh, stuck with me and struck me uh, as being right on and what is really needed right now. And that is what true leadership of, is about, is not searching for consensus, trying to find that middle ground, that thin middle ground that we can all agree on, but really all it does is reinforce the status quo, but molding a consensus, which broadens that uh, middle ground into a common ground on which we all can stand upon and really move forward aggressively toward a much better country that includes everybody and lives up to the, the, the pledge of allegiance. And to me, I love that quote because it's really what Take Action is all about. <coughs> it's not just about searching for a consensus, but molding a consensus for a society. A consensus where everybody truly does have equal opportunity, where everybody does have justice for all. And how does that apply to each and every one of us? Well, if we're about molding consensus, we can go out and live our life like Dr. King did, kind of in a big way, challenging all these things that are going on, but that's not going to be true for most of us, right? What most of us can do is in our everyday lives, go out, talk to your coworkers, talk to your neighbors, uh, make a phone call, recruit a volunteer to Take Action Minnesota, write to your legislator, and just stand up for what you believe is true about our state, this vision of, of our state, which is inclusive as opposed to exclusive, and which includes everybody and not this, just the selective few. Because that's what, at the end of the day, is really going to fulfill the dreams that all of these folks before me talked about and all of you talked about at your tables. And you know, we've heard this analogy of the, the throwing a pebble in a pond and the concentric circles growing from that. 
the great thing about Take Action Minnesota and your being here today is we can each take those individual actions together to make that difference. But when we combine as a group as Take Action Minnesota, we can create those little ripples into waves that will truly wash across our state of Minnesota and make it a new state, a better state, a state that is living up to its commitment that we close the pledge with, which is that we are going to be a state where there truly is going to be liberty and justice for all. So 